The Lord gave to the children of Israel his law, by which if they were obedient, if they were able to keep his law, they would have become a holy and righteous people. They would have been stewards of his. They would have set the example for all nations to follow in order to be holy and righteous, but they were unable to keep the law. They failed in keeping the law when they sinned the great sin at Mount Sinai right away after making a covenant with the Lord. So. God, he gave to the world his only begotten son because mankind was unable to keep his law. And that's what we see in our Sunday school lesson for today. If you desire to be holy and righteous, you must be obedient. You must follow the way that Christ set for all of us to follow in order to become holy and righteous. Our lesson, it opens today in the 17th and 18th verse with Jesus telling us that he did not come to destroy the law or the prophets. Jesus, as you have heard me say time and time again, he came to fulfill the law so that one who obediently follows his way will live in accordance to, will live in fulfillment of the law. You see, it is impossible for anyone to fulfill the law without following the lead of Jesus. Our goal should be to enter into the heavenly gates of the Lord's kingdom. It should be to enter into heaven. And the only way that we can enter into heaven is if our soul is holy and righteous. Again, as I said in our lesson last week, the soul is the key. If your soul is right with the Lord, you will enter into heaven. If it's not right with the Lord, you will not enter into his heavenly kingdom. So our goal should be to get our soul right with the Lord. Jesus tells us that we should not murder. He tells us that we should not be angry with our brother without a cause. And we should be weary of insulting and cursing those that are around us. We'll see him mention the judgment of the council, the council being the Sanhedrin council there in the 22nd verse. But the council that is of the world against one who would speak ill of those that are around them. You know how we judge folks who don't do right in our eyes. Now, if the world would judge you for speaking against those that are around you, what do you think the Lord would do when you speak against, when you treat those that are around you, when you treat them poorly? You see, holiness and righteousness, it is filled with nothing but love. And the love that I'm talking about is the love that is of God. It is the love that uplifts, not the love that would tear someone down. That doesn't sound like love to me. So I would ask all of you today, if your soul is filled with anger, if your soul is filled with hatred, do you think that your soul is fit? Do you think that your soul is ready to enter into God's heavenly kingdom? A kingdom that is filled with nothing but love, a kingdom that is filled with nothing but joy, a kingdom that, in other words, is filled with nothing but peace. Again, I ask you, if your soul is filled with anger, if your soul is filled with hatred, do you really think that your soul is fit for the heavenly kingdom of God? My answer to that question is, I don't think so. We'll see Jesus. He again, he points out there to the disciples in the 27th and the 28th verse that we must be faithful in the way of God. Jesus, we'll see, he spoke of how adultery works for the reason that you and I, all of us that genuinely believe in him, we are in fellowship. We dwell in fellowship with him. Therefore, we live in fellowship with the Lord. Through fellowship, you and I, we should be fully devoted. We should be fully committed to the Lord because at the end of the day, God, he is fully committed to us in our relationship with him. The Lord, he is fully devoted to us in our relationship with him. God, he is faithful. And so if the Lord is faithful to us, we should be faithful to him as well. 
Nobody wants to be cheated on in the world. You wouldn't want someone to cheat on you. So why would we cheat on God? God doesn't want anybody to cheat on him as well. So we end our fellowship with him. We end our relationship with him. We must take our relationship with him seriously. We must be of true faith. We must be of sincere faith in him, not adulterers, not one who would cheat on him in our fellowship, in our relationship with him. Now, being faithful in the Lord, it again, it calls on us to love him and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. In the 38th and in the 39th verse, Jesus, he, he calls on us to resist returning evil for evil. Yes, we have certainly heard it said that an eye for an eye, and we've heard it said a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you today, Jesus says to us, that is not his way. That is not the way of Christ. The truth of the matter is that answering hate with hate begets nothing but more and more hatred. And I suppose when we look around at our world, when we look at our society today, when we're wondering what's going on in our society, well, that will be the key. We answer hate with more hate. The kingdom of heaven, we should understand that it is a perfect kingdom. And so this is why the Lord calls on us to love repeatedly throughout scripture, because his kingdom, once again, I say to you, it is filled not with hatred. It is not filled with anger. God's kingdom, it is filled with love. It is filled with joy. It is filled with peace. And I say to you again today, if your soul, if your soul is filled with anger, if your soul is filled with hate, you have a soul that is not fit for the kingdom of heaven. Our lesson, it comes to an end there in the 43rd and the 44th verse with Jesus, one more time, calling on us to love. I know that is being repeated through our lesson, but love is very significant. He tells us to love even our enemies, those that curse us, those that hate us, those that spitefully use us, those that even persecute us, we are to love. To those that curse us, we should bless them. To those that hate us, we should answer their hate with good. Those who spitefully use and persecute us, we should pray for them. So don't answer their curses with curses of your own. Again, that would be answering hate with hate. We don't need to perpetuate more and more hate, especially when we are a child of God. Again, we are to rise above that. We are to be better than that. We were created in holiness and righteousness through our faith in the only begotten Son of God. So I encourage you today, grow in love. Let us grow in love again. We ought to be getting ready. We ought to be getting our soul ready, fit for the kingdom of heaven, which again, I say to you today, is a kingdom that it is perfect. The kingdom of heaven, it is a perfect kingdom filled with love, filled with joy, filled with peace. And if again, you desire to be a citizen of heaven, then that's the place where you need to get your soul to be. A place of peace, a place of love, a place of joy. And all of this is of the Lord. So again, get your soul right so that you can be ready to enter into the perfect kingdom of God.